Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Tropic Trade Group, and this is your end of day market recap for uh, what is today, Monday the 27th. I'm all confused. I was out on vacation last week, so uh, just coming back and catching up today. And, um, you know, I, I think it's even though I was out um, all day Friday, it seemed like a very uh, choppy trading session. And um, overall, it just kind of seems like that's um, that's the conclusion that we're at right now. And I think everybody's looking for for a little bit of direction. Um, so I will go through a couple of the index charts um, just to kind of, um, you know, mention or, or give you that viewpoint of you know exactly what I'm seeing in the charts but um, the themes of the day uh, and by the way risk disclaimer in front of you make sure that you're reading that uh, full risk disclaimer there but everything that we're discussing in the video is for information purposes only so today was more of a uh, value day uh, I'm referring to value versus growth um, we've actually had I think it was I think it's been four weeks of growth out performing. So um, this was a day, and, and I don't know if this is going to be the, you know, for the whole week, but um, it was a pretty nice day for value stocks today. The VTV ETF, um, which you can see on the bottom of your screen, was up uh, almost 1% for the session and growth uh, underperformed pretty drastically. It was down about a half a percent for the session. So when you add that up, it's almost it's almost a one and a half percent difference um, that you saw today, value versus growth. And um, you know, of course, the banks are are catching all the attention, but um, really, what was strong today was energy stocks today. So I will go over a couple of those um, and give you my uh, opinion on them on them as well as um, a little bit of what we um, saw in terms of option activity as well and some chart setup. So yes, IWM had a big massive day today, up one point one percent. And um, you know, it's kind of funny because I posted this chart yesterday. I was in the airport, and um, you know, of course, you can't even really see the one one the positive 1.1% 1 .1 uh, move on this chart of IWM. But, you know, it's someone asked me for this um, once I sent this out, because so first of all, what we're looking at here is, um, you know, this, this box, which I explain this in just about every one of these videos. But if you want further explanation, go to my pinned tweet on, um, on Twitter. And, and this will basically explain, um, here's the pin, here's my profile, but this is the pin tweet. And you can learn more about Virgin Point of Controls, about the market webs, about vol using volume at price. But um, I'll explain just in two sentences here, or try in two sentences, that um, the price action, right, you can see this, this box is based on um, roughly one standard deviation of all the price and volume activity of 2022, right? So when we draw this forward, you know, from that volume profile, you get really good resistance and support, right? And it will help you to see if we're sideways. And you can see on the top left of your screen, it says range bound, right? We'll be range bound unless we break 195.87 versus 165.67. Right. And um, I don't like I was just talking to somebody uh, earlier about this who, you know, has is, is opinionated one way. And I'm like, well, I don't really know how you could be super opinionated about the market right now, because all of the indices, um, the the small caps, which are leaning lower. Right. And 165 is a, a potential bounce spot. And um, the Qs, as well as the SPY, they're all inside value for the year. So um, yes, this is on the bottom end of the range and below the 200-day moving average, which I define as a downtrend. But when we look at that weekly chart, um, we are still... Um, when, when we look at the weekly chart, we, we are still very much sideways, right? One thing to note was this 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 RSI bullish divergence, right? Um, be, you know, very quickly how to what that means a bullish divergence is when the price makes a new low, right? Which it did here on Friday, but the RSI did not. So the RSI actually improved as the price went down. So that's a bullish divergence, and this is the first time we're back above the five period moving average since the beginning of last. Uh, last week. So there's still, a, you know, so if you caught this bounce, congratulations to you, because that's how this market has been lately is like, it's just basically playing a bounce for the most part, um, you know, or, you know, selling rips, uh, because a, a lot of the price action has been, again, once again, very sideways. All right. So again, it's the beginning of the week. So it's probably the best, you know, I didn't do an end of week video, but, you know, here's, I'll use S&P futures here because um, they just trade more, uh, but we're right at the 200 day moving average. How many times have we seen the price? 
price go back and forth over the 200 day moving average in the last couple of weeks. So again, this is really tough. I mean, here's a couple of times um, we cross back below it here. We cross back above it here. We cross back below it here. You know, then it's been more serious in terms of the oscillation that we've seen. So again, um, you know, if, if for the overall, you know, S&P 500, which is the 500 largest names, I mean, it's, it's very sideways and, um, you know, we were leaning lower a couple of weeks ago and, you know, we're, we're more like, right, just right. At, you know, we were at the point of control, which is where the majority of the volume happened in 2022. So we're a little bit above that, but just to kind of give you perspective, right. The cues as well, right. Um, you know, it's leaning higher, but this is still inside value. I mean, it could go a bit more till we get to the other side of the value area, but this is also range bound. Um, I think the cues, um, we've got def really nice defined levels here. Um, and I'm watching this 309.53 in the cues. Notice that we got there last week too. try to break higher and, and price, you know, didn't want to do that. So, you know, again, the valuer is giving us a, a very good clue about what's going on here. And um, on the one hour chart too, and guess what? We're inside value there too. Um, even though we did start um, the, um, we started the period above value. So the 80% rule is technically in effect. And this might be a better chance, you know, considering this sideways action, by the way, you know, look at last week's high, how we tagged that virgin point of control perfectly, right? So again, that that's an area of high volume that we haven't revisited. Um, and you could see where this is, where this derived from all the way back here, right? See how price did not pass through this value area at all, right? That'll leave a red line when you uh, behind, right? So high volume area that we haven't revisited. Once we revisited, oftentimes this is what you could see. Uh, oops, is basically, you, even though it's from so long ago, right? The market remembers. Uh, let me just go back here and let me go back to the one hour. All right, so. Um, I'll just wait for this to fill in again. The longer it, it is, the longer the but there is your um high point of last week, right? So we literally tagged that and um and fell back. And and basically, the cues have been going overall, the cues have been going sideways, um, for the last week. Sorry, how many times am I going to say that? But it you know, it is what it is. This is what we're dealing with. So I, I think overall for today, you know, I mentioned I would talk about crude because that um and energy stocks. But um, that kind of concludes the major index review. Let's talk about this just for a minute. So here's crude on the on the one hour chart. Um, this was a nice move here, but you have to ask yourself. I think you know if you're if you're using your technicals here, right? We're getting close to where this broke down. Remember, for a while this was trading in this range between um, you know basically seventy three to about um, you know eighty three. And the range just got tighter and tighter and tighter. And then we broke this. Um, so here's your bounce. And I thought that we could see a bounce. I mean, this this was an aggressive move, but um, this will even be a little bit more clear on the weekly chart too, right? So we found support, but overall, like until, you know, I said this even when we were going back and forth here, it's tough to really get that bullish about energy names unless crude gets above 82. So of course, like um, oil services had had a big day today. All right, but this is on the weekly chart. So again, this is a really, really nice bounce and congrats if you caught it. But I think 285 is a big level that this has to get through. So again, just remember, you know, people are, sometimes people, you know, um, make a conclusion that, hey, I don't know why, you know, these stocks are rallying today. Well, keep in mind, I think also a phrase that I use a lot of times is that usually price doesn't go up in a straight line, doesn't go down in a straight line. So, I mean, they've been pretty washed out the the energy stocks um what i find kind of similar uh which i was repeating earlier like you know this is a breakdown and you know this could be some type of a bearish consolidation and then we might continue to head lower below the 200 day moving average but i just find how similar it looks to um to kre right now which is the regional banking etf again different right um this is more dramatic right break below um really big break and then the consolidation Right, consolidation in a downtrend at this point. Right. So again, you know, I'll go back to um OIH or you could use anything, but again, it's just it's a big drop in consolidation. So um that's what I think is kind of interesting. Um, all those energy charts look that way. It's not to say that every energy chart is gonna is gonna go down. Um, you know, there's going to be some outperformers. One name that I'm watching in this group is BP. 
Uh, again, you kind of have to wait for some of these charts to kind of back and fill, but I have no position on in this. You know, I'm just watching, we'll see if it can regain. Um, again, a lot of times people, you know, I get a lot of chart requests from time to time. And what's the name is decently above the 50 day moving average for months and it breaks it, right? Sometimes it's going to come back up and retest, but it, it, for me, it, I, I always have to see the price action regain that 50 day moving average, right? And if you think the stock is going to go a lot higher, Right, because I know some people they like, oh, this is a great dip opportunity, and that's fine. But for me, I, I would rather uh, have the assurance of that it's going to get back above the 50-day moving average. If you really like the stock for the long term, then it's, it's it has to get above the 50-day moving average, regardless. Right? You don't want to mess with something that's not able to do that. Um, you know, that's that's a sign of strength. Um, and then, of course, what I like to do is like once it does regain the 50-day moving average, is to for it to um, uh, you know, then you can use your stop price, right? And you know where to get out, right? Um, STLD, non-energy, but this is this was one of the strongest steel names, right? This still has a ways before this reaches the 50-day um, moving average. This was a pretty decent breakdown as well. So again, I, I watch this group. I mean, for now, the way that I deal with a lot of these names that have really broken down a little bit too far for me, even though it's above the 200 day moving average, um, is I use like, I day trade this stuff, right? Or if I'm gonna take a swing trade, it's gonna be pretty short term. All right, so that's um, a couple of areas that I wanted to mention because um, it is good to see some of these areas come back a little bit too, right? I think it's good for the, for the overall market. Um, breath was not, you again, you know, without the cues participating, and the S&P finished basically just barely positive. But um, you could see that um, the, you know, the breadth for the, for, the, uh, for the NASDAQ was negative. So again, we're still not there yet in terms of you know, going back to what I had just talked about, about you know, in terms of sideways action, right? You could see that um, this is still not translating into stronger breadth. So you know, one of the things that we've talked about quite a bit in the training room is um, the advanced decline line, as well as the um, McClellan summation index. This has not been updated for today, but you know, overall, uh, this to me is when I get more aggressive when the red line begins to cross above the blue line, right? That will tell you that we've got more participation in this market. Um, right now, we still have more, more declining versus um, advancing. I don't know if that was the case for today, but that's what the the um, situation has been basically since the beginning of this of February. So um, if you're like me and also paying attention to this, it is a really big game of patience, right? And what I'm trying to do in the meantime is day trade quite a bit and, um, and swing trade kind of lightly scaling into positions um, as well as taking tar you know taking targets when the market does get to the high end of the range um, aehr was a good example for me last um, over the last week right so this is a semi name by the way it's going to report earnings this week but um, you know I, I added a little bit in this name um, today right uh, Again, Thinkorswim just doesn't want to bring up any charts today. But we, you know, we basically got to the bottom of value um, for the week on the one hour chart. And um, of course, like I'm going to basically buy the dip a little bit, right? Um, and again, I, I will not be holding this name into earnings, uh, which is th actually 3.30. Right, not. Uh, I thought it might might have been Friday, but it's Thursday after the close of this name reports. But for now, um, you know, I can continue to kind of hold this and um, buy the dip a little bit because this was a really nice trade um, that we caught last week. Right, other semis. Uh, you know, I I said this um, again. I, I did a quick, uh, very short um, audio file for members this weekend. But, you know, I, I'm still long some NVIDIA after taking several targets. Um, the 20 day moving average probably needs to catch up a little bit with the price action, but um, it, it's also not breaking down either. So I'm, I'm in the last portion of a trade and it's hard to hold the trade, you know, that's um, that's trending right now in this market. So I'm finding the best way for me to do it is with the last piece of a trade, which is what I have on right now in NVIDIA. And if it does kind of come in back into the 20 day moving average, then I will kind of look to um, reestablish a position, but that's quite a ways down. I'll be stopped out um, if we break uh, 262 on the last portion. It, that's my trailing stop for the trade. Um, other areas, which I thought were pretty interesting. Um, if you look at our 
um, weekend watch list. Uh, this is what I sent out late last night. Docs. Um, these three stocks, they they are th these were three of the better names on our um, list. But um, Docs, this is a name that nobody talks about. Um, this is Am Docs, and it just had such a nice trend um, till about February and kind of broke down a little bit. But the dip was bought and real nice move today and a tough uh, tough day for tech uh, was up 1.4 percent. Fortnet, I know a lot of people are looking at this name at this point. Cyber name that's um, breaking out of the value area. 67 would be the upside uh, level for this, but pretty nice. You know, even it if it, even if it dips a little bit for whatever reason this week 62.69 is a level to watch um also msi this is another name that i don't see people talk that much about again they're a little bit harder to trade they're not more, much of a it's not a day trade type uh name but um this did break out of this range that it's been in over the last uh couple months so um, i like this as long as it stays above 271.60 all right so that's a couple names and you can see our, our watch list um did pretty well, even though I've got more um, more tech on here than probably anything else. Um, you know, other names. I, I I think that the the consumer staples. I was looking at the twenty day new high list. A lot of consumer staples. A lot of healthcare. Um, I actually try to trade in uh, AbV, and I I decided to take it off. But um, it's just there's not a lot of return. <laughs> to um, there's more risk than probably return in some of these names. I think it could could get up to that red line one sixty one seven eight, but that's only three or four bucks up. So um, that's the same thing I was looking at Coca Cola earlier today. Um, but these names, they just don't fly, right? In terms of, you know, you could play these with in options. Um, you know, you can make money in options with these because the options are are cheaper. The implied volatility, of course, is is less. There's another chart that doesn't want to come up here after hours. All right. Um, let's try that again. But uh, if not, you'll have to just look at the, yeah, it just doesn't want to come up. Um so you could see Coca-Cola. I'll try one more time with the day. There we go. So the daily chart, again, you know, where do I think this could get to? Just 63 bucks. And then it probably digests in here. So that's tough. Um, McDonald's. Um, also, I, I actually like this chart. It's trying to, you know, it's had kind of like a like a cup type um, deal going on here. I don't know if it needs to put in a handle here, but um, it's actually had this type of price action a few times where it's gotten to this range around 273, 275. So I, I was, I'm a little bit apprehensive because it's failed so many times here, but um, I did try Monda, uh, not Monda Lee's, um, uh, I just mentioned Coca-Cola. What is, what is the name? Monster. <laughs> Not Monolith, Monster. Um, I gave this a try today because it's it's been so bunched up like this. And maybe if this group has some momentum to it, you might be able to see. So it's a, it's a potential breakout um, that we've got here in Monster. So for now, I'm long it and I have a defined stop. If it moves back into the range, um, I'll be out of it. Um, also, you know, a couple of names I've been watching too since they reported earnings. This Academy Sports and Outdoors, this is ASO. Um, it's just kind of consolidating here. It's not a bad pattern. Um, and I would be watching for this to resolve higher. Um, I took a position in Dick Sporting Goods today uh, because it has is, it is essentially or just about filled this uh, earnings gap. So instead of chasing up here, I, I do like it here. I might be a little bit early, uh, but I'll be watching this 50-day moving average to see if it holds. Um, and then one other name, uh, IOT, right? This is Sam Sarah. I, this took took a little while here after um, had a nice gap up, spent some time consolidating. Here's a good example of a virgin point of control. Um, broke in here to basically uh, back below the five and the 20 day moving average, right? So maybe a false little move there, but moved back above these two moving averages. So it got me interested and I did start a position. Um, one last thing, which I, I did not take today is AUPH. Right. This is a name with a decent short interest is about 13% short interest, um, a lot of end of day option activity in this name so um, maybe one to watch small cap uh, biotech name guys have a great night um, again, you know, uh, I think, you know, going into this end of um, end of month, end of quarter. I uh, remember the 31st Friday is the last um, is last trading day of the month. Um, but, um, you know, we'll see if we get some more direction, um, considering how sideways this market is. And um, one other thing to note, too, on Friday, we also do get the PCE deflator, which is another gauge of inflation that comes out on Friday. So that 
you know, could provide some market direction as well. All right, guys, have a great night and see you tomorrow.